the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is already March 1st. March 1st, 2021. It's a Monday. So today we're going to read from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 36 to 38. Very interesting Gospel for today's Mass. So Jesus said to his disciples, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Pay attention to the very first line. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Okay? <clears throat> Our Lord <clears throat> gives us a standard right here, or a reference to your Father. What does he mean by your Father? It means God the Father. Okay? God Father. God the Father. Then he continues, stop judging and you will not be judged. By who? Judged by who? Okay, well, basically the reference here is your father, God. Right? Then he says, continues, stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Again, the question is by who? Right? God the Father. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Again, by whom? By God the Father. Give and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. Okay, so very interesting how our Lord, uh, you know, puts these ideas together here. So what is our Lord telling us? He says, okay, be merciful, stop judging, Okay, uh, stop condemning, be generous to others. In what way? What's our standard? Well, he says the way that God the Father is merciful to you, is, is non-judgmental, is forgiving, okay? and is generous to you. Now, who is it who will give you gifts overflowing in the end, right? When he talks about give and gifts will be given to you. <clears throat> A good measure packed together, shaken down, overflowing will be poured into your lap. Who's going to do that to you? God the Father, right? Because God the Father cannot be outdone in generosity. He's going to give you much more than what you think you are giving. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's going to give you more mercy, more forgiveness, and be generous with gifts to you, particularly spiritual gifts, which we call graces. Right? He's going to give all of those things to you. But there is a condition. Again, just like any other thing, there is a condition. What is the condition? We need to do the same things of being merciful, forgiving, non-judgmental, and non-condemning, and being generous. Okay? We need to do the same things first towards our neighbor. Okay? Very good, Mia. Towards our neighbors. Translated into our, into our circumstances, what does that mean? For you, it means you do these things 
to your siblings. First, you do it to people you live with. You do it by extension to your co-workers. You do it with your own relations, relatives, whoever it is that you encounter every day of your life. You extend these kinds of mercies, these kinds of forgiveness, this kind of generosity towards them. And God, your Father, will do the same to you. Not so much using your standards of giving or mercy, but in a more abundant way, right? In good measure, packed together, shaken down, overflowing. Because you know what? God always gives more than what you might expect. God always gives you back more than what you give others because God can never be outdone in generosity. You cannot beat God in generosity, in giving, right? But he wants you to first do it towards your neighbors. Why? You might ask, why does not God have to wait until I do this to my neighbors before he gives me what I need and I want in terms of mercy, in terms of forgiveness, in terms of material or spiritual goods? Why does God, <clears throat> in the first place, want me to do this to my neighbors first? <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's a good question, right? It's a good, fair question to ask. <laughs> okay. Uh, and why is that? Well, because, okay, so this is the answer. Where is the answer? <laughs> the answer comes from St. John. As to why... Why we do why why God wants us to do this to our neighbors first? Yeah, Saint John tells us in one John, chapter four, verses twenty. Uh, I I will paraphrase here. <clears throat> you cannot say you love God if you cannot love the neighbor that you see. Okay? You cannot, if you say that you love God, the God whom you do not see, yet you do not love your neighbor, then you are lying. See, St. John uses very strong words. You are lying when you say you love God. But then you don't love the neighbor whom you see. So you are lying. Okay? Because it's easier to love your neighbor whom you already see than to love the God who to most of us is mysterious, right? Who requires a lot more in-depth study and understanding for us to appreciate, okay? It's a lot easier to love the people already who are around us and through them understand the love of God and the mysteries of God himself. So God reveals himself through our neighbors, right? God himself said, whatever you do to the least of your brethren, you did it to me. See? So when we love our neighbors, the way God himself said, right? What is, the, what is the greatest commandment when he was asked by the Pharisees? Well, his answer was, well, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. So there's so many references in the Gospels that always point to loving your neighbor as a requirement. Okay? Loving your neighbor as part of our expression of love for God. And so, <clears throat> if we don't love God, I mean, if we don't love our neighbor, then we, we, we really don't love God. And we don't love God as the Father that He had revealed Himself to us. Because if we cannot love our neighbor, who are already our own brothers, our own relations, our own relatives, they are connected to us through these kinds of relationships, then how can we love God with a filial relationship? with the devotion of a son or daughter towards a father, if we cannot even love those who are already related to us in one way or another on this earth. If we cannot love God as a father, 
Okay? Uh, we're going to hear what God told the Syrophoenician woman who asked Jesus for a miracle. What did Jesus tell this woman? You recall? This was a gospel not too long ago that we commented about. Jesus said, you know what, woman? It's not fair to take the bread of children, the food of the children, and give it to the dogs. That was a very painful rebuke, right? But our Lord, of course, said that to test the faith of this woman. But at the same time, he wanted to affirm that the good things I have in stock, so to speak, I first have to give to my children, to my own family, to the children who call me father and who address me father and who love me as a father. Then I will give them the bounty that my kingdom has in store for them. In this life, packed together, shaken well, compacted, you know, in abundance. And also for them to inherit later on my kingdom in heaven. Okay? So this is the reason why, you know, to, for us to merit all of these good things from God our Father... We have to love our neighbor. We have to love the other children of God, our Father. He gave us His other children around us for us to love. Because loving them is a manifestation of our love for God Himself. Okay? So very beautiful um, uh, connections between our relationship with God and the merit we get, eh? the merit and the graces we get from God. They, we first have to do this with our neighbor. So, this Lent, again, it's a good time. Very good time for us to examine our consciences and ask ourselves, how quick am I to extend mercy, understanding, forgiveness towards those who might offend me. I think the key word is quick, quick, quick. Remember, in another, in another gospel uh, uh, passage, we hear that God is slow to anger. See? Slow to anger. He's patient. Patient to those, His own children with plenty of shortcomings. And that's what who we are. That's what we are. Right Now, how do we extend the same patience, the same uh, uh, accommodation, the same understanding towards the shortcomings and failures of people who are around us? That's the question to ask ourselves. How quick am I in forgiving? How quick am I in extending understanding? Oh, okay, I was offended. Because of what my sister or, or brother or, or relation uh, or boss or anybody did to me. Well, instead of immediately cursing that person, condemning that person or calling him names or whatever, we could perhaps stop a little bit and think, uh, maybe I'm also capable of the same, the same mistakes. I'm also capable of the same errors. I'm also capable of hurting somebody else. With my own way of doing things, with my own bad manners, with my own bad example, with my own hurtful words. So maybe it should give us pause and think, help me understand that situation for a while. Help me understand that brother, that sister. And then maybe instead of a condemnation or having a, 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 a you know, acting in a judgmental way. I would rather think and say, wait, maybe I can give him a correction. See? A correction is a loving thing to do, right? A fraternal correction rather than being uh, uh, judgmental and condemning our brother or our sister, right? So let us, be, let us do these things. Number one, pause. Every time you feel offended by anything or anybody, pause. Think. Examine yourself. 
examine your own conscience. Because by doing that instantaneously, you, you will help uh, 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 put your tongue in check or your behavior in check, right? Before you say anything, think anything, or do anything bad, it will help you check yourself. And second, after a brief examination of, all, of yourself, be quick to forgive. Be quick to extend that accommodation and forgiveness towards that brother, that sister, your neighbor. And third, pray. Pray for that person right there who is offending you. Pray for that person. It's always an occasion to pray. And number four, number four, if you think that that behavior, that offensive behavior merits correction, then go out of your way and correct that brother, that sister, that neighbor in a friendly and charitable manner. Okay? In a friendly and charitable manner. So these are four things that you can do. Okay? Every time you're confronted with something or by somebody who is in one way or another offending you. Can we review the four steps? First is, huh? Pause and think and examine your conscience, right? Number two, what's that? Be quick to forgive, right? Forgive right away. Be quick to forgive. Number three, pray. Okay? Pray for that person. Number four, correct that person if it merits a correction okay so very good there you have it folks four things we can do to put this gospel message into practice in our everyday lives okay and remember god is never outdone in generosity whatever kind of deal we measure out to our neighbors is the same thing we are going to merit from god so let's take good care of how we deal with our neighbors, how we forgive them, how we extend forgiveness and generosity towards them. Okay, that wraps it up for us on a Monday, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good week ahead of you. And Ava is very busy now, already playing and writing notes and stuff like that. And so I don't know if she's going to come up here. Ava, are we going to say goodbye? Come, come now, come, come, come. Everybody's waiting for you. Come. Uh-oh. No. That doesn't look like it's going to happen today. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it extended. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.